Hi, I'm Rick Conlow. I'm CEO with uh, WCW Partners. We're a management business consulting firm and uh, we help organizations improve their results in sales, customer retention, and leadership effectiveness. And I want to talk to you about what motivates people really. And in fact, the number one question we get from managers and leaders everywhere we go across the U.S. In fact, uh, uh, Doug Watsaba, my business partner, he goes all over the world. The question we get is, how do you motivate people? Everybody wants to know that as if it's, uh, there's a magic formula that's going to turn everybody on and uh, quadruple results in an instant. Well, let me start by sharing with you an article here. Uh, Frederick Herzberg wrote an article called, how do you, one more time, how do you motivate people? As if he wrote the article kind of a little irritated that people keep asking it. Because when you dig into it and what the things are, they seem to be constant over time. And what is it that motivates people? It isn't necessarily the company's goals. And what it comes down to is, as you look at Herzberg's research, achievement, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, advancement, growth, and learning. All those things are the keys to motivating people. And those are things inside people in terms of what they want. In fact, uh, there was another uh, research uh, that was done by the Total Quality Survey and it asked employees, what satisfies you on the job? It also asked managers, what do you think satisfies employees on the job? The employees came up with three key things. I'll just share the top areas with you. Number one thing they said was interesting, challenging work. Notice how that ties into what Herzberg said. Second thing they said was recognition for a job well done, and that's also part of some of Herzberg's points. And the third thing was feeling of being in on things, teamwork, and that they have value in the workplace, and they have an opportunity to learn, and that also ties into what Herzberg said. Now, what do you think the manager said was the number one thing that they felt satisfied or motivated employees on the job. Well, if the first thing that came to your mind was money, that's what most managers say. Notice there's a difference in terms of what's being said. There's a perception gap. And herein lies part of the problem with motivation is managers and leaders don't really understand what they people want or need. They just think for the good of the company, go for it. You know, do your best work extra hours and make it happen. No, there's much more to that. We got to get inside what each person wants and we need to take the time to be able to do that. Now, you know what? We've got a little bit of an economic challenge in this country. And, uh, you know, you could say part of it's because of politics, the indecisiveness, uh, the confusion that's going on there. But I also believe part of it is because of leadership. I believe our leadership today is kind of tied into the fear, apprehension, and anxiety of what's going on in the world. And they're sharing that with their team, and we're creating that in the work environment, as opposed to thinking about the things that motivate people and spending time on that based on what we just described a little bit earlier. And I also feel we got a little bit of the Garfield syndrome going on in the workplace with leaders today. And I'm talking about Garfield the cat, if you're familiar familiar with that. And I can think of one of the segments, Garfield standing there and says, everybody should do their best. And Garfield puts his hand behind his back, kind of goes like that and then goes, then I don't have to do much of anything. <laughs> I think we have some of that. I think in management leadership today, we got a little complacent, a little lazy. I think the success of the U.S. business in the 90s, even the early 2000s here, we got a little comfortable and we're not challenging ourselves enough. We're not focusing on those things that make the biggest difference. And when you get down to it in an organization, it's our people. And we need to tune into that. Let me give you an example. One of our clients, uh, in fact, a good friend got a new, uh, a new job, a sales and marketing uh, VP. And what he have instantly did is he put a great plan together, thinking about how are we going to transform this uh, department, this business that I'm in now. He hired excellent people, contacted us to get involved with the training and coaching. We delivered that. He had awesome promotions. Guess what happened? Within three to four months, they doubled the results. There's a whole different focus, providing people an opportunity. Uh, they can learn, they can grow, they can do something worthwhile, they can achieve goals. That's what we're talking about. Leaders today need to be students of the game. And as I've said a number of times before, if you want your people to be better, you have to be better. Treat your employees as superstars. Coach and train and support them as superstars. And you'll be a superstar leader. Thanks for tuning in. We'll look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.